Hey, this is Chris, keeping it real, facts over fear. So I just want to show you this chart first. Decided to do a comparison between a seven-day rolling average of new cases, confirmed cases, compared to a 14-day rolling average. And I think I like the 14-day rolling average because it more clearly shows the trends, the, 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 the longer-term trends of uh, the rise and fall in a number of new cases. Uh, and this does align better with the, the typical 14 to 15 day life cycle of, of, of uh, the virus, especially in people who, who have no symptoms or very mild symptoms. It tends to last about two weeks. And so I think, <coughs> I think a 14 day rolling average is a little bit more appropriate, although not necessary, but just thought I'd show you that. Now let's get back to the main show here. Uh, the time to herd immunity chart for North Carolina. The current herd immunity date is 12-08-2020. That blue line is the one we're interested in because it includes all of the data uh, since the beginning of the outbreak in North Carolina. Deaths continue to remain low. I haven't done a death chart because it's basically been 25 to 30 a day. Uh, once it reached that level in Sometime in May or early June, it reached about 25 to 30 a day, and it has stayed that way regardless of the number of tests, regardless of the number of new cases, regardless of the number of hospitalizations. And so that is good news. Uh, remember, at the beginning of this outbreak, we were told a lot of people were going to die. And, you know, 3,900 people is not an insignificant number, but 3,900 people out of 10 million people that live in the state is a very small number. Therefore, the risk factor of dying from this disease is very very small so it's not something you know it's not something to be deathly afraid of so you don't have to look over your shoulder you just need to be take some simple precautions and you'll probably be okay and most of the people who get it who are under the age of let's say 50 will not even experience any symptoms <clears throat> I realized the next item is, I realize I've not updated the entire sh chart to show the new NCDHHS data put into place on 9-25-2020, and so I've now updated the entire chart to reflect that data. And so it hasn't really had much effect on the end date. It did shift over about a week on 9-25, but, the, but the date has been shifting right now for the last uh, three weeks. And so that's, <coughs> that's neither good nor bad. But we can see the trend seems to be that this, that the, that the, the, the rate of new confirm, well, the rate of, of a decrease in the number of available, and this is basically what this is, a, a, a chart of the, of the number of people who are left before we reach, we reach herd immunity. In other words, the number of people who are available to get this disease and so well not exactly because we're not counting that we're, we're only going to 70 percent because 70 percent should be herd immunity in North Carolina so <clears throat> to reach herd immunity we need approximately 270,000 uh, 2.7 more million more people to get it which means approximately 5.7 million people in North Carolina remain to be exposed and so when about half of the number of people left get exposed then that's when we'll reach herd immunity. And that kind of explains why <clears throat> the number of cases can, continue, can, can spike back up because there's, even though we're getting closer and closer to herd immunity, I'm not really sure what the curve of an, of an idealized uh, viral spread would look like. If, you know, if, it, if nothing was done, what would this graph look like? And, and then, then we would have the ideal graph that we could really know what was going on. But we're we're fiddling around and we're closing things down, keeping them closed, um, <clears throat> uh, keeping people from gathering together in groups bigger than well, 10 or 25, or, whether or not you're indoors or outdoors. And so we don't really know how this virus would, would react or how it would spread if, if we just continued on with our normal everyday lives. Although I think this last, the last peak that I showed on the last chart shows that we that's we are basically getting to that point 
that we are seeing the kind of spread that we would see if nothing was being done with this virus as far as being safe or being or trying to do something about it. <coughs> so confirmed cases have climbed to nearly the same levels as the previous peak in mid-July. We'll see what happens in the next weeks to see if that trend continues. I, I expect it will continue to climb especially with the addition of the antigen tests in addition to the PCR tests that were previously the only data set we were working with. Obviously, my conclusion from this is obviously masks are not an effective solution to slowing the spread of COVID. Otherwise, these new numbers would be much lower. In other words, it doesn't appear, statistically speaking, that, these, that wearing a mask is having any kind of impact at all upon uh, the spread of this disease. And this brings me to the next point, which I think is the main driver of the spread of this virus. Societal mobility is the main driver in the increase in cases. Many schools are back in session. And as I just go about my normal daily life and looking at the number of cars on the road and the number of people I see in stores that I go to, it seems to me that on the surface, societal mobility has just about returned to normal. Now, if societal mobility has just about returned to normal and it, and <clears throat> and that is the main driver, then why why are these, if, if masks were so, so effective, why is it that these numbers are climbing? Masks are touted as an answer. Six feet distance is touted as an answer. And washing of hands is kind of touted as an answer, but no longer. I mean, I think everybody understands COVID-19 is not a contact disease. It is an airborne aerosol disease. <clears throat> and so the masks are not having any effect on this because, my last point, masks have had a perverse impact on cases. Feel, people feel secure with a mask on because they believe the propaganda that the government's putting out and that various medical, and I do mean propaganda, I chose that word carefully. People feel secure with a mask on and so to move about more and more and they will move about more and more and come into closer and closer proximity to others and which will enhance the spread of the virus. Remember this is an aerosol disease. Masks do not stop an aerosol. They may slow the trajectory of it down. They may slowly have some effect on the diffusion of it. But we all know how diffusion works. It doesn't it doesn't demand it doesn't depend on kinetic energy for an, an aerosol to spread through the air, it just happens, and that's just, a, that's just how physics works. That's how atmospheres work. You introduce something into an atmosphere, and that something tends to spread evenly throughout that atmosphere, and unless something actually keeps it from doing so. But cloth masks do not stop these very, very tiny particles from coming through the mask. They may stop a few. The sum may get caught up in the fabric, but since these masks are not designed like if, if everyone was wearing N95 masks, I would say, yeah, let's, and if that's what was really required, that, then I would say I would be for that. But to, to throw a cloth mask, a homemade cloth mask, or some, something made in some factory in China on your face and expecting it to do something medically effective, I think is foolish. And so that's where we are this week. And so I think that we will continue to see more and more infections as people continue to be mobile and continue to believe that masks are effective. <clears throat> they will get closer and closer to each other and, uh, and and I think to a large extent that's already happened. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. We really appreciate your comments. Like and subscribe, we appreciate your subscriptions. If you have any questions, fire away. All right, we'll see you on the next fact-filled video.